Is this ever open? Ever? It's been here for donkey's years. Is it ever open? Hi guys. Uh, today, I want to do something a little bit different. I love history, I love heritage. So I'm in my hometown of Carshorton. We're going to have a little wander around and find all the heritage plaques in Carshorton High Street. Now, these aren't the English heritage plaques, I do with blue plaques. These are Sutton Council heritage plaques on famous and historic buildings in Carshorton. So, um, yeah, this will be quite interesting. I know where they are, hopefully. So, uh, let's go. Those who have seen my last video, um, people might have seen my other video of walking the Wandle Trail, uh, which I'll link below. Passed through all here before. So, let's go to the Grove. This house was built in 1828 near a grove of trees in the grounds of Stone Court by Joshua Ryle, partner in a firm of local Calico Flint printers. Between 1856 and 1884. It was the home of the Rector of Carshorton and then of the leather manufacturer Sir Samuel Barrow. Look around the street. William Tenter, 1855 to 1928. Cut up in the Carshorton for 15 years. During this day at 8 North Street. On this site, he painted many watercolours showing Carshall and embedded in the 1880s and 1990s. And the Internet Technical Bookshop has been here like forever. It used to be a pub that was closed in the 1930s, which I didn't know. Okay, let's head across the road. I'm going to head down now towards Carshall Water Tower and then head our way back. What's interesting is when you're walking around a village or a town, you just pass through, we just walk through, you go shopping. You just stop and look at the history. It's really, really interesting. Okay, we're heading over to Honeywood Museum, originally called the Wandle Cottage. Honeywood dates back to the 17th century with major additions between 1898 and 1903. The novelist William Hell White lived here from 1864 to 65. There's a fantastic old photograph of elephants bathing in the, in the Wandle here. Uh, it was an old circus passing through town and they stopped here to um, have a drink. <laughs> Imagine that happening now. The Wandle's all dried up here. I don't think anyone really knows where the source of the Wandle is. There's actually a river Wandle named after our one in New Zealand. This is Sutton Ecology Centre, formerly known as the Old Rectory. The Old Rectory, the Queen Anne style building was never a rectory but the private home of one of the rectors and dates from 1700. In the 20th century it was a home to M.J. Wallingson timber merchant and later together with the lodge became the college of St Saviour in Anlingen Retreat. This is Sutton Ecology Centre. Really really interesting place to have a little walk around. It's great having something like this in the heart of uh, suburbia. Remember a hundred years ago this was just been a village. Nothing else. It's a lovely spring, late spring smell coming off the fauna and leaves. want to know more about Carshorton I'll link my Ancient Isles episode I did back in 2015 which has all the history and everything. Okay let's head to the water tower. 
they'll have to forgive me now because a couple of these plaques now are just off the main road so there's going to be a little bit of traffic noise so uh, bear with me the water tower built for Sir John Fellows of Carshorton House the water house supplied pipe water to the mansion and grounds the tower contained the reservoir survived by the pumps worked in an internal water bill the building incorporates one of the earliest English bathrooms which is lined with defeat tiles. Also on this site, Carshalton House. Behind this wall lies Queen Anne style building with later additions, which housed cadets of the Board of Ordnance School in the mid 19th century. It's now part of St. Philomena School. So, Carshalton House. Mansion newly built for Edward Colton almost certainly incorporated part of the earlier house was sold to Sir John Fellows, sub-governor of the South Sea Company in 1718. Behind these walls lies Carshalton House, built 1700. The estate was formerly known as the Manor of Kinsley, or the Old Farm. I've never seen this before. All the times I've driven past an old pumping <laughs> Wow. Never seen that before. The Greyhound Inn. This public house was known as the Greyhound as early as 1700. It was a sporting centre at the venue where racehorses were inspected prior to competing on Banstead Downs. The old inn was rebuilt around 1840 and a separate existing building, the Two Rooms, incorporated. OK, we're now heading to All Saints Church. A few little plaques around this area. Amberley Sculpture, Church Hill which has now been removed. Anne Boleyn's Well. A romantic tradition alleges that a blow from the hoof of Anne Boleyn's horse caused the spring now dry to rise. However, this is all folklore actually, however Boleyn's Well more likely refers to Bologna or Boulogne. The Count of Boulogne was Lord of the Manor in the 12th century. The well may have been near a chapel dedicated to Our Lady of Boulogne. With all these things, folklore kind of builds up, but it ain't true. They've actually cleaned it up as well, which is really good. It's, had, it's really overgrown, uh, the well, but um, it's really nice now. Fantastic. All Saints Church, an earlier church was extended by the Boulogne family in the 12th century and altered during the early 18th, late 19th and early 20th centuries. Monuments include those of Nicholas Grainsford, died 1498, the Sheriff of Surrey and Sussex, Sir William Scowan, died in 1722, Governor of the Bank of England, and Sir John Fellows died 1724, sub-governor of the South Sea Company, one of the very first companies in the world. It's a lovely old door, look at this. I don't think it's probably been opened in years, although it's got quite a modern padlock in. <laughs> the engraved stones right up against the wall. I think this is a really ancient site. There's good evidence that there was a Neolithic site here. A bit higher up and a little bit of ground overlooking a body of water, which is a wandle. So it's had a long, long history of uh, settlement. Let's have a quick look around the graveyard. I love graveyards. Not in a morbid way, just from the history that's here. So we'll have a little, little wander. I was here with Richard Vogel, the Board Explorer, last year. We did a little video uh, about Carshalton, which I'll put the link below. The sun keeps coming in, going out, coming in, going out. So, excuse me if the light and dark kicks in all the time. Okay. Um, going that way. The stone was laid in the glory of God, October the 3rd, 1891. Window taxes on this building, 
once upon a time. Carshalton Old Post Offices. In 1802, the London Two Penny Post was extended to Carshalton. The receiving house was in the former King's Arms. It became a sorting office in 1834, servicing Sutton and Cheam. In the 1880s, Susanna Rotherham was the sub postmistress in this building. Is this ever open? Ever? It's been here for donkey's years. Is it ever open? <laughs> That's an old place. Carshalton Library. This building was designed by R. Frank Atkinson and W. Willis Gale and opened in 1908 to house the offices of Carshalton Council. It incorporates the former fire station and stands on the site of a house occupied by the deer keeper of Carshalton Park. I love that, a deer keeper in Carshalton Park. <laughs> and the orangery. Used in the 19th century as stables to Carshalton Park House. This building is one of the few visible remains of the Scowan Estate. Built in 1768, it stands on part of the site of the rejected house and outbuilding planned by Leone in the 1720s for Thomas Scowan. Just in the big amphitheatre in Cushington Park. Okay, we're at the Grotto. Built in the 1700s, just as a folly really. The Grotto, one of several garden features surviving from Carshalton Park, this grotto dates from the 1720s and was built over springs, now often dry. Oh, I'll have to explore this place, they cleaned it out. Remember, if you're in your town, your local town, your local village, Always keep a look out for the heritage plaques. I mean, some towns do like little walking trails. We've got one in Carshalton, a uh, little short one that goes around the village, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, keep a look out. So there we have it. We enjoyed that. Now, if I've forgotten any, please comment below. Also, please subscribe or like. But if I have missed any, please um, let me know. I know there's one in Wallington, just up by Sainsbury's, which I haven't been to yet, which I will. And next time I'm going to do Sutton and Cheam. Go and find the heritage plaques around there. But I hope you've enjoyed it, as I say. Sorry about the sound, it's Bank Holiday Monday. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Be seeing you.